So today we are going to perform the examination of cardiovascular system. So starting with the cardiovascular system, what should be the patient position while performing a cardiovascular system examination? The patient should be lying in a 45 degree angulation or semi propped up position as you can see that the patient is lying in a 45 degree angle or semi propped up position. This semi propped up position help visualize the jugular venous pulse better. So starting with cardiovascular system examination, what are the points that we will look for in general survey before going to the systemic examination of the cardiovascular system in general survey what are the points you will look for if you are suspecting any cardiovascular system pathology starting from the head end of the patient you we, we look for the jaundice yes jaundice can be sometimes the feature of cardiovascular system pathology how? How can jaundice be a feature of cardiovascular system pathology? Because of heart failure, especially the right-sided heart failure. When there is right-sided heart failure, there is congestive hepatomegaly. And because of congestion in the liver, the bilirubin level may rise, which may cause jaundice in a patient of cardiovascular disease also because of right-sided heart failure. So we look for the jaundice in cardiovascular system examination also. So we have a separate video module on general examination of the patient. So here I will not show you how to look for a jaundice. You can go and watch the separate video module on general examination as a whole. Then after looking for the jaundice around the eyes, we can look for the gentle asthma. Gentle asthma occurs because of hypercholesterolemia. In a patient of hypercholesterolemia, usually you see gentle asthma, which is a yellow cholesterol deposit around the eyes. That is the gentle asthma. And you can also see arcus senilis or the corneal arcus. These are the gray line at the outer margin of the cornea. It is also associated with high risk for cardiovascular disease. Then you should look for these signs in a patient if you are suspecting cardiovascular disease. You should look for the gentle asthma. You should look for the arcus senilis in a patient. You should also look for jaundice in a patient. Next, coming to the face, you also look for the mitral facies, also known as the malar flash. These are the bluish tinge discoloration of the malar region seen in a patient of mitral stenosis because of cutaneous vasodilation. As in patient of mitral stenosis, there is reduced cardiac output and because of reduced cardiac output, there is cutaneous vasodilation in the region or in the malar region which lead to typical malar flash also known as mitral phasis. So these are the signs you look for in the face of the patient if you are suspecting cardiovascular system pathology. You can also look for the horizontal creases on the ear lobule. This also suggests hypercholesterolemia. Cholesterol not only deposit on the surface or the on the margins of the eyes in the form of gentle asthma, but it can also get deposited in the tendons. So tendon gentle asthma or the ocular gentle asthma is a sign of hypercholesterolemia most of the time. The arcus senilis, the horizontal creases, the horizontal creases on the ear lobule, these are the signs of hypercholesterolemia in a patient. Then after looking for the mitral facies, you can inspect the tongue for the pallor. Pallor can be one of the pathological related to cardiovascular system. If the patient is having infective endocarditis, the patient may have pallor. Then in oral cavity, you can also look for the cyanosis, especially the central cyanosis. Many cardiovascular system pathology can lead to central cyanosis, especially the cyanotic congenital heart diseases can cause central cyanosis in the patient. Or the patient of acute pulmonary edema 
can also have central cyanosis because of reduced increased amount of reduced hemoglobin in the blood. So we have discussed all the mechanism related to cyanosis, how to examine cyanosis and clubbing in our general examination module. So while examining the cardiovascular system, I am telling you what are the positive points that you can find in a patient. So in your exam, you will be asked that what positive finding do you expect in cardiovascular system examination. Then you must say there may be genthalasma present, hypercholesterolemia can cause genthalasma. Hypercholesterolemia is related to majority of the cardiovascular hazards like myocardial infarction. So we have to indirectly look for the signs of hypercholesterolemia. In the oral cavity, you look for the cyanosis, you look for the anemia, and sometimes you can see a high arch pellet in a patient of Marfan syndrome. This high arch pellet in a patient of Marfan syndrome will also have aortic regurgitation. So indirectly, you are looking for Marfan syndrome and you are looking for cardiovascular disease in the form of aortic regurgitation. So indirectly, I'm telling you what are the general examination point in a patient of cardiovascular disease. Then coming to the neck area, you can look for the jugular venous pulse, the JVP. We have a separate video module on the jugular venous pulse. You can go and watch that, how to measure for the jugular venous pulse and what are the different waveforms, different pathologies related with different waveforms. We have a separate video module on the JVP. You can go and watch that. So in the neck, you look for the JVP and the carotid arteries. Then coming to the hand, hand is an important part for cardiovascular system examination. Majority of the pathologies you can find in the cardiovascular system, the findings in the hand. You look for the clubbing. Clubbing can be presenting feature of cyanotic heart disease. Clubbing can be a feature of infective endocarditis. So we have also a separate video module on clubbing. You can go and watch. So we have to see for the clubbing. We have to also see for the signs of infective endocarditis. What are the signs of infective endocarditis in the hand? The patient may have oscillar node. What is this oscillar node? It is a tender node on the pulp of the finger, which is a erythematous tender node on the pulp of the finger, also known as oscillar node. It is a sign of infective endocarditis. The patient may have Janue lesion, these are also erythematous nodule, but on the palm, but it is non-tender. So oscillar node is a tender node and Janue lesion is a non-tender nodule that is erythematous. Both are erythematous, but oscillar is tender and Janue is non-tender. Oscillar occur on the pulp of the fingers and Janue lesion occur on the palms. So these both are the signs of infective endocarditis. Then you look for the clubbing, you look for the signs of the infective endocarditis, the oscillar node, the Janvier load, and the splintric hemorrhage. The hemorrhage on the nail bed may be sometimes visible in a patient of infective endocarditis. These signs are occur because of immune complex deposition in a patient of infective endocarditis. So you look for all these signs in a hand. Then you have to examine the pulse of the patient as pulse of the patient is an important or one of the most important aspect of cardiovascular system examination. You have a separate video module on the pulse also you can go and watch. So I am not going the proper into the cardiovascular system. I am only telling you by the now that what are the general survey finding in a patient of cardiovascular system. So these are the positive thing you have to look for in cardiovascular system examination. And also at last, don't forget to look for the edema, which is also one of the important signs for cardiovascular system examination. We have a separate video module on general examination. You can go and watch that separate, separate video module to look for how to look for cyanosis, how to look for clubbing, how to look for edema, how to look for the JVP. So again, we are not going to repeat the examination process, but we will go into the system proper, that is the cardiovascular system examination. So what do we look in the cardiovascular system examination is the first the inspection of the chest. 
So you have to inspect the chest. You can see that the patient is in 45 degree angulation. Patient is in 45 degree angulation. Then you have to inspect the chest. You have to inspect the chest to look for any scar mark. The, pre the patient may have previous scar mark surgery, previous surgery, and because of that surgery, the patient may have scar mark. So what cardiovascular surgery the patient might undergo? The patient might undergo valvotomy, the replacement of the valve. So the patient may have a median scar over the sternum, median scar over the sternum because of either valvular replacement or valve replacement in a heart or the patient might have undergone coronary artery bypass graft because of which median sternotomy was done in a patient so you might get that scar mark and you might also get some pacemaker in the patient's clavicle just below the clavicle you might get sometimes the pacemaker or implanted defibrillator which has a permanent place in cardiovascular system so the patient has an implant in the form of pacemaker or implantable defibrillator. Say suppose the patient is a case of heart block. So the patient has a permanent pacemaker which is pacing the SA node continuously. So the patient might have a pacemaker attached in his chest by surgery. Then you have to look for any visible veins, any visible vein on the upper chest, the patient may sometimes have visible vein or engorgement of vein in the upper chest because of superior mediastinal syndrome or superior vena cava syndrome. Because of superior vena cava syndrome, in superior vena cava syndrome, there is obstruction of the superior vena cava because of compression of the superior vena cava. So the blood will be not drained into the right side of the atrium from the superior vena cava. So the patient may have engorgement of the veins above in the region of the distribution of the superior vena cava. The patient may have facial plethora also. There must be swelling of the face. There will be enlargement of the neck veins or enlargement dilatation of the neck vein, distended neck vein and distension of vein on the upper chest in a patient of superior vena cava. Then you have to look for any visible pulsation. The first important is that you have to look for the apex bead in the region of the precordium. So what is precordium? Precordium is the overlying chest or the chest wall which overlies the heart is the precordium. So this area is the chest wall which is overlying the heart. So this is the precordium. So you have to inspect the precordium to look for the visible apex bead. So if you can see that the patient might have sometimes the visible apex bead, then you have to look for that visible apex bead. Normally, the visible apex bead is present on the left hip intercostal space, left hip intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. So almost 50% of the patient, the apex bead may not be visible. There are many reasons for for which the apex bit may not be visible. Say suppose the apex bit is behind the rib. So there are ribs here. So if the apex is behind the rib, then the apex might not be visible from above. So if the patient is obese, then also apex might not be visible. If the patient is having emphysema, that is the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, then also apex might not be visible and not be palpable also in this condition. If the patient is having dextrocardia, then the apex might not be visible on the, on the left side. So these are the conditions in which you cannot see the apex bit. So in inspection, if you are looking at the apex bit, then ideally you should tell that apex bit is visible just below the nipple or just below and medial to the nipple or below and lateral to the nipple. This will give the examiner an idea about the position of the apex. So the normal position of the apex is in the left hip intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. So you inspect for the apex bit. Then you inspect for the any other pulsation. Say suppose the patient is having a large pulsation on the left side of the precordium. It might sometimes indicate a large aortic aneurysm. 
or a large ventricular aneurysm and because of that aneurysm you can see the visible pulsation on the chest so you have to look for that pulsation in the in the chest then you can also see sometimes you can also see the pulsation in the second intercostal space you can also see the pulsation in the second intercostal space so because of pulmonary hypertension the patient may sometimes have pulsation in the second intercostal space or the visible pulsation in the second intercostal space if the patient is having very severe pulmonary hypertension and if the patient is a thin built patient then you might see the visible pulsation in the second intercostal space so you have to inspect all these things to look for to look for the pulsation to look for the scar mark to look for the apex beat then after inspection of the abdomen especially after inspection of the chest for cardiovascular system pathology then you go to the palpation of palpation in the cardiovascular system so in palpation cardiovascular system palpation the first thing we look for is the apex beat so how to look for the apex beat so the patient is lying in an 45 degree angle first we will select the space we will select the space so just simply you place your palm over the you place your palm over the precordium you place your palm over the precordium and you you move your palm up and down to feel for the apex to feel for the to feel for the apex so when you localize the apex you try to localize you try to localize with your one finger you try to localize the apex with your one finger and after you localize the apex with one finger then you start counting the ribs you start counting the space in which you have localized the apex bit so how to start counting the intercostal space in which you have localized suppose i have localized the apex here first i have placed my palm over the precordium then i try to feel for the apex when i feel for the felt for the apex i tried it to localize with my one finger so i have localized the apex with one finger in this position in this position now i will see that this apex is located in which intercostal space so how to look for this first you select the external angle the patient external angle and just so this is the patient external angle which is prominent part of the sternum is the external angle which you can feel a ridge that is the external angle this is your external angle so just below the external angle is the second intercostal space just below your external angle is second intercostal space and then will come the third intercostal space and then will come the fourth intercostal space and then will come the fifth intercostal space so my apex is in the fifth intercostal space fifth intercostal space now i will see that the whether this apex is in the mid clavicular line or not so i will select the mid clavicular position and then i will look that whether my apex is corresponding to the mid clavicular position or not so you can see that this apex is perfectly corresponding to the mid clavicular position mid clavicular position and in the fifth intercostal space so we can say that this apex bit is in normal position so first we have looked for the position of the apex bit second thing you look for the area of the apex bit normal area of the apex bit is around 50 paise coin if you place a 50 paise coin here it will cover the area of the 50 paise so this is the normal area of the apex if the area is enlarged or if you are feeling the apex in this large area in this large area very large area it will signify a diffuse type of apex which is seen in certain condition we will discuss later that the diffuse apex may be present in a cardiovascular disease what are those diseases we have discussed in the theoretical aspect of cardiovascular system examination so here we are only learning about how to do the procedure so if the area is diffuse it signifies some pathology normally it should be in a area of 50 paise coin then 
After looking for the position and the area of the apex, you look for the character of the apex. The apex can have different characters.